In this episode, Heinz Ward travels to San Diego, California, tours the Challenged Athletes Foundation building, and tackles his biggest fear of all, open water swimming. As Hines continues on his journey to become an Ironman, he's finding that there are both large and small obstacles scattered all along the way. The thought of swimming, cycling, and running 140.6 miles in one day can be overwhelming. Hines is learning that he has to break tall barriers into smaller barriers in order to overcome them. Paula brings in Coach Rock Fry to make sure Hines is ready tech-wise for anything and everything. When it comes to your equipment, something minor can become something major in a matter of seconds. But here's the first thing. Okay. Okay. Okay, if you hear that and you're out for a ride. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> what would you do? Scream for help. <laughs> I put my thumb up or something. I, I have no idea. I pray not to hear that okay. noise ever. It's extremely important to know the basics to uh, get yourself home and get yourself through a race. We've had several people who show up at Ironman races do not finish simply because they can't change a flat tire. Just give them a little, little bit, bit of air with your mouth. Before today, I knew nothing about the bike mechanics or anything. Five minutes and 30 seconds. Wow. That was awesome. It's a B plus your first time, dude. <laughs> After successfully changing two tires, Hines travels to the Challenged Athletes Foundation headquarters. There, Hines meets up with his Become One teammate, below-knee amputee Eric McIlvaney, for a tour of the building and to find out more about CAF's mission. As a Marine in, in 2011, when I stepped on an improvised explosive device and I lost my right leg below the knee. That really became my challenge, getting out and competing. It was really my recovery, my rehabilitation. Created 20 years ago to help paralyzed triathlete Jim McLaren, CAF raises money to buy the adaptive equipment and provide the training support disabled athletes need to stay in the game of life through sport. The CAF building was amazing. I didn't think there was a place like that that existed. And I can see, I mean, that place probably did wonders for him. Now, look at him. I mean, he's competing for the Ironman right alongside with me. Hines inspired me because he strives for greatness. You know, when times are going rough, Look, look over at him and see the same pain on his face. If he's not going to give up, uh, then I can't either. After the CAF tour, Hines is off to face a major challenge of his own, open water swimming. He meets up with coaches Paula Newby Frazier and Rock Fry at the home of the first ever triathlon back in 1974, Mission Bay. As we walked into this journey, the single biggest mental hump for him was open water swimming. Just nervous is a sense of out of my element. Me, I don't like sharks. All that stuff is in the back of my head. He just had to man up, even as scared as he was about doing it. There was no room for him to have a meltdown, even though I think there were a, mo there were a few moments where I think he would like to have, but he didn't. So I think it was important to have somebody like Eric there because I know that this was a big obstacle for Heinz and to see how great he is and what a good swimmer he is, I think it's really, it actually kind of inspired Heinz. He was killing it. I think he's inspiration to not only myself, but to any, anyone. Both of you have a good stroke, and exactly that, Heinz. I know I noticed that as soon as you started to pick it up. You know, just focused on relaxing and the technique and your breathing. The more relaxed I became, the more efficient I was in the water. I don't think a shark can swim around this far. <laughs> it's one thing to go out and casually train with a few friends, but it's a totally different story when you link the swim, bike, and run together on race day, a thousand other participants, cold water, current, nerves, the glare of the sun, and the pressure of the media. It's two weeks later, and Hines is back in San Diego for his first ever race at the Super Seal Sprint Distance Triathlon. It's a 500 meter swim, a 12 mile bike ride, followed by a 3.7 mile run, a total of 16 miles. In comparison, the Ironman World Championship is 140.6 miles. 
After 14 years as a professional football player, Heinz Ward is about to open a new chapter on his Ironman journey. A little nervous about it because this is my first time ever. I know how nervous he is. He's certainly sweating the details. I don't really know the transition part of it, you know, and that's why we're out here today walking the course. South to the turnaround on the bike and then... We're on this road? It's very intimidating just at the sense that all these people know me. I know they want to say that they whoop Heinz Ward's butt. <laughs> as much as he has his fears and he's very honest about it, he knows how to handle pressure. I think I can do that. I just haven't applied the swimming, the biking, and put it all together and do it all in one day. So that's what I'm a little nervous about. Even if he blows himself up, I want to see him go and find where that boundary is right now for himself because he's going to push himself harder for longer than he ever has in his life tomorrow. The nerves of just being out and competing with other people, that's something that's all going to be new to me. For our next episode, Hines has his first game day as an endurance athlete and attempts to become a triathlete for the very first time. Down the road, he tackles the St. Anthony's Olympic distance triathlon and takes a bike ride to his old stomping grounds at the University of Georgia with Ironman Brazil champion Tim O'Donnell. All that and more on Become One.